Oh, hey. Oh, yeah, we're live. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Nerd Eye uh, with uh, Craig and Aloy. And uh, today we're actually going to – we skipped the last one. Uh, I don't remember why. It was something happening that we were like, eh, we can't do it. So <laughs> – uh, Just blame it on the holidays. Let's let's do that. I mean, because that makes sense anyway. It probably was that. Um, but uh, <laughs> we are back. It's the new year. Uh, we're actually recording this on the first, which is, you know, pretty awesome. Not not everybody can jump on and live stream on January first. You know, they have actual things that they're doing and stuff. I don't. So, and neither does Craig. <laughs> uh, this is <laughs> this is what we're doing here today. Um, and we decided that we were going to discuss uh, upcoming projects from both Third Eye Games and Nerd Burger Games. So that's what we're going to talk about this amazing Friday evening. Um, and I have I have a bunch, but Craig, why don't you start us off? Oh, okay. You have a bunch. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I have a few at least, I like three or right, something. Right. Um, <laughs> well, I'm looking at... Um, and people who are following me on Twitter and, and my Discord and all that kind of stuff kind of know this already. But for anybody else who's popping along, happening along to this thing, um, running on the assumption that Kickstarter is going to do Zine Quest again for the third year, which they've done in February the past two mm -hmm. years, um, I've been working on a little Zine game, little like a little small scale kind of deal um, called Low Stakes, which is basically the... Um, it's the uh, the RPG version, <laughs> a, a kind of a rules light game um, that replicates what we do in the shadows. Right. Um, so characters are playing, you know, vampires or werewolves or ghosts or um, humans who are kind of in on things, um, all sharing a house together and all just kind of being not very good at being roommates and not very good at living in the modern day <laughs> <clears throat> um, and having all sorts of complications that stem out of just. Um, you know, partly out of like being gothic era monsters, <laughs> right. but also being displaced into the modern day. Um, and so, yeah, like if the, if, if my, my expectation is that'll go to Kickstarter in, um, in February, if for some reason they don't do zine quest or zine quest gets pushed to a later date, um, I may just kickstart in, in February anyway. Um, unless Zine, if, like if Zine Quest got pushed to March, I'd probably sit on it till March just for the added publicity that, you know, the, yeah, the Zine the Quest thing game, gets yeah. because people find people go looking for that stuff more. But if it gets pushed much later in the year, um, I may just go ahead and, and do it. Um, it's a small scale thing. It's not costing me a lot of money to make it. It's, you know, I expect that, you know, if I, if I get a couple hundred backers, it pays for itself. Um, so I'm looking forward to Are that. This is. Are, mm -hmm. are we thinking that they're going to push Zine Month back? I I don't know because usually by this time, they've announced something about Zine Quest. Kickstarter okay. themselves okay. has made some sort of announcement. It's a month to go. Like February is a right. month away. It's the first of January, my friend. Right. <laughs> um. So, or maybe they're just assuming that everybody assumes it'll be in February, so they're not bothering to uh, to promote it quite as early. Well, because this um, will be like the third third or fourth year that they've done this it will right? be the third one yeah if they do third, it yeah um so that's the plan for that and this is like my first foray into doing um some mo more of the work on the project myself i'm doing the layout myself um okay. i got myself um a copy of affinity publisher and i'm learning how to use that so the layout is not super fancy schmancy. It's going to be pretty <laughs> straightforward, but it's a small project. I figured it'd be a good one to learn on, um, to just spend no, a I mean, little your, time. Your, your, your first couple of, uh, first couple projects in layout are going to be pretty easy. And then it, you just keep, keep getting better and better. Like layouts, like my jam. Uh, like I love doing layout. Uh, it's just, I just get like in a Zen mode and I can just be like, Ooh, I'm moving text around and <laughs> I can do that for like hours. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, no layouts fun. And it's good to go ahead and start off small, uh, especially if you're doing it yourself. Uh, and uh, Indigo Dragon says happy new year and happy new year back to you, Indigo Dragon. Um, so yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome though. But uh, you, you've told me that you're working on that game before. So it's good to see that it's actually, 
uh sounds like it's nearing completion if you're gonna <laughs> kick it in february like it's uh like it's going pretty well with the development um yeah it's it's the game's done it's play tested um it's edited it uh it's more or less laid out with the exception of just like some some flourishes and things that i'll probably add to it and the artwork mm -hmm. has i've seen sketches for the artwork but the the final artwork is not done yet but that should happen this month that's cool and it's, it's and that's it's small it's just it's just a handful of it's just a handful of illustrations so it's yeah it's not i'm not waiting on <laughs> like 70 illustrations <laughs> yes unlike unlike one of my games that should be out this uh this year now in 2021 uh we're shooting it's for Olrun, which is actually from uh new agenda and uh we actually got the game done like with all the writing and everything i think it was like three months ago uh and awesome. then now we've just been like okay cool now that we have all of the writing done crap there's a bunch more art that we need now so it it's been a fight uphill you know because we have um we have like a like one possibly two artists kind of doing the majority of the work which means uh all of the artwork is consistent and beautiful uh but it's taking longer because we're only having the one artist do it all so there you go but the goal is that we'll get all of the rest of the artwork, I think, by the end of this month, and we'll finish off the layout and the proofing and all that stuff by the end of February. And then February will be when people start getting PDFs, and then we'll deal with print after that. But we'll at least have the PDFs in people's hands. And uh, that game is going to be really good. Oh, my God. Especially just looking at the artwork. Like, you know, I, I did the majority of the mechanics and stuff, and just, like, uh, I keep going like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, that's the drawing of the thing that I wrote up. And it it, it makes it look <laughs> way cooler than what I described it as in the text, you know? Uh, isn't, so. isn't, it, isn't it the best when the artist gives you that interpretation? <laughs> receiving, I art, think so. receiving art is one of my favorite things about making games. It's like yes. top three. Getting final artwork. Sketches are great, too. But, man, getting final artwork when it's like, you know, like I, I wrote a thing two years ago and now here it is. Like, that's what it looks like. That's yeah. The yeah. artist puts their it's spin on it. Awesome. it. It's great. But yeah, but, oh, but yeah, but Oh run, Oh run is come is coming out. Super excited about that. That's been a couple of years in the making and it was supposed to be out a while ago. Uh, but well, you know what? I'm not even going to say, cause we were delayed because of me <laughs> and then COVID hit, which delayed it even more. So it, I can't even say that all of the delay is COVID related, but like half of it is. So the other half is just me. So <laughs> sure. Um, and I, I'm sure that um, COVID didn't help you like get to where you needed to be because it kind of messed everybody no, up. Oh my God. No, I just messed I everybody's fought really hard. Messed I fought them up really mentally, emotionally. Get, exactly oh my harder, god harder to Everybody. get harder to get stuff done just stay focused and yeah lots of a lot of other stuff weighing on people this past year yes that is definitely true that is definitely true um do you have anything else that you're working on that you're coming out with for <clears throat> well one yeah good strong hands will publish um in the first half of 2021 um nice. that's that's on track to to get the rest of the artwork this month um, and, uh, Todd, um, who works for you as well, um, yep. Todd Crapper is doing layout and has done a spectacular job. The layout looks awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, though, you know, it's just, it's, uh, there's a little bit, there's some stuff left to be, to, to be laid out. Um, like, uh, you know, a couple dozen pages, but, um, and then, you know, the proof process and a, a proofread and whatnot, but I think it's reasonable. Don't hold me to this. I think this book will be ready in April. I feel there like April's go. probably. I think I can. I think I can probably get this thing to print by like mid February to late February. Get it to the there printer, and so then it'll you know like it'll it'll take something. like a month. It'll take like a month plus a month or a little over to to get the print run done and right and get it shipped and, and assuming no issues. <laughs> <laughs> assuming no issues which well is the you, biggest you go through the there's a proof process with the printer too like you you get for those of yeah. you who want to know how the sausage is made when you do a print run you get you don't they don't send you they don't print a bunch of books for you um but they do they print um like a set of pages and then a 
right. like a, a, a cover a cover mock-up and they send it to you and say, okay, this is basically what it's going to look like. It's not perfect <laughs> because the print, the, the printing press looks a little different than, than what they printed on for the proofing, but the, it, tell, it, it lets you know that like, okay, everything's laid out in the right place. This is your last chance to like, like, okay, now make sure that all the page numbers are showing, make sure that there's yeah. not like a weird line break somewhere. <laughs> Your um, it's your last chance to do it for free. Yeah. Gonna, well, and, but, and you, you can always tell them to change it after the fact, but you got to pay them to reset things, you know. Right. With <laughs> with but and with print on demand and PDFs and stuff, like if you goof something up, you can just you know you can just change it and update the files, and then everything yeah. from that point forward just you know will will come out right. With a five hundred copy or whatever print run yeah. like okay it, you got to make sure it's all right because you're about to Better print 500 or a thousand or whatever books and they're all gonna look like that yep oh yeah um, um but that's cool be, so you got there will be a typo. There will, yeah there will be a typo in there somewhere just prepare yourselves everybody i just tell everybody oh, no. i tell people i tell people that all the time there's there's no such thing as a perfect book there'll probably be a typo <laughs> yeah I've, I've described my proofing process like i have like four layers of people that have to go and there's always one or two there's always one or two typos yeah, you always miss something you, i mean even with even with multiple people you're not going to catch everything um all right so let me run through so i have two books that should probably be out for part-time gods this year um we got one out last year and it was supposed to be a second one but the second one got delayed uh so that second one will be the first one of this year because <laughs> it actually is almost done. I literally, uh, I have to write up a couple of backstories for some characters and a piece of fiction. And then the book's done. Like I just need to do it. <laughs> I even already have all the art and everything. Like it's all in. I just have to actually make the time to finish off the last little bits of writing and get those little bits of writing edited. It has to obviously go through the proofing and all that stuff, but that should be a January release. So definitely January for the first part-time gods book of this year. Uh, and the second one is going to be, so that's for the part-time gods companion book, uh, which has a bunch of new options, uh, new occupations uh, that you can choose from new archetypes that you can choose from when you're making your characters. Just, I just wanted to just overload everybody. Uh, I are all my games are already designed with so much decision paralysis in them that I just wanted to double up on that. So yeah it's just a, it's just another book of just more things that you wish you could <laughs> put onto your character but you can't because you chose that other thing that you like uh so should be fun uh that's it's a really great book honestly a lot of good stuff came out of that um when i'm you know writing it and developing it like just so much stuff uh and some of it is some of it is first edition stuff that was revamped for second edition but the vast majority of it is all brand new stuff that is new to second edition. So that's the, that's the cool thing about it. Um, and then the second book should be for the touched, which is how you, um, you play those, those, those regular people who have, who aren't gods, but have a little bit of divinity in them. So uh, that's oh. like your champions, your God killers, your, um, you know, you're forsaken basically those people who have either made like dark you know deals for power or whatever but they're they're people though you know so they're but they're not so they're not gods and uh yeah no, oh my gosh i've done so much development on that like that that is just like basically because it's basically five different types of of the touched and then it's five chapters each one just like having a whole new character creation options and everything that you can do because they all work differently and they all you know some are some are definitely more powerful than others uh but you know i'm excited for that book that book should be out second half of the year since we're getting one out first half of the year second half of the year for the other one so those are my two part-time gods updates uh which i'm very excited about <laughs> was uh was the touched part of was that part of uh the first edition of the game um the touched, the touched characters did, so in first edition we touched upon playing uh, champions <laughs> and god killers yeah well it, okay pun not intended um but we we did talk a little bit about doing um 
yeah so we did yeah so champions and god killers were in first edition but like on a small scale it was more just like god just yeah you so know like this is a whole book that really this, ex- that what's that this is a, a whole book that just expands that out into a much more robust right. and, and it's going to expand those kind of two, but also then add in three others and it's going to be, you know, giant. So, uh, and all of the source books and stuff all come with like custom adventures and all that fun stuff. Um, and uh, hello to Mildra and hey, over Mildred. on, uh, over on Twitch. Uh, hello to John. Hey, John, good to see you. John Passion Nerdly. Everybody can go check out the Passion Nerdly uh, podcast. They do actual plays of Ninja Crusade. So there you go. Um, they do. They do some of my games too. We've. Uh, what did we? Was it Die Laughing? I think we did a Die Laughing way back. Oh, that's nice. I should. I should pop in there and do another thing sometime with them. I if should have, probably if they'll have me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, we're just gonna invite ourselves on. Like, who cares, right? Like, <laughs> hey, John. Just we're just gonna show up one day. Just make some time. Uh, <laughs> just make some time for me, please. Um, um so there's that. I don't want to bogart it though. So what else do you got? You got low stakes and you got big strong hands. You got you got anything else in the works? Um I'm starting I'll be like it it's it the the, the system is most more or less written and because it's using the same system as good strong hands, um, with some tweaks for a game called Nowhereville. Um, that is, uh, like it, it's a horror game set in a town that won't let you leave. So it's a Stephen King ish style kind of horror, small town horror where you're, <coughs> you're stuck in this town. You can't, the town won't let you leave. Um, uh, and you're surrounded by, you know, a couple thousand people who everybody knows everybody else. Everybody knows everybody else's business and all these terrible things happen and everybody just kind of sweeps it under the rug and nobody really pays attention and like, you know, kind of just ignores the fact that this is like a murder capital. Like this is a terrible place to live. (laughs) (laughs) So it it draws a little bit of inspiration from in in that respect from it, Um, which, you know, in the town in in it, uh, the the town of Derry is like, you know, everybody knows that bad things happen in Derry, but everybody kind of ignores it. Um, Yeah, Yeah. And, um, so that, that uses the same system as good strong hands, but tweaked a little bit. And, um, I'm going to be play testing that actually on nerd. Eye, um, starting in like mid January, I th- hopefully we'll have the first game session on the 16th. I think that's, uh, um, if that's a Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon, um, and we'll run for you know, seven, eight, nine weeks. Um, and we'll play test the system like, like, on the show and you'll see, you'll, you'll get a chance to see like what changes maybe if, if, depending on what kind of does change. Um, and, uh, the, the biggest, the, the biggest chunk of stuff that I have to really still have to write for that is the town itself. Um, and I, I came cause the, I expect the game to be, you know, kind of a, a six by nine book, a hundred and something pages, like low hundreds, like it, it's not going to be a huge fat game. Um, and, one of the things that um, that uh, kind of gets me with settings is once you know the setting, you know the setting. Like once you know that Bob the janitor at the school is a vampire, Bob the janitor at the school is a vampire. Right. Um, so my intention with this actually t- is to um, not set any of that kind of stuff in stone, but create like there's going to be this this whole cast of NPCs and every single one of them is going to have a list of possible secrets of the mm. things that they are and some of those secrets are just a normal human being they're just a regular person going on and going on about their business who's in this town where things you know where bad things happen um but you might also like you know the a character might be a werewolf or a character might be a cult leader or a character might be a vampire or a character might be you know have like some sort of alien parasite um that controls them or whatever like i'm creating a whole like little list of things that you can be that i'll have a monster section that talks about that um and so when you when a gm runs the game um the idea is that like each time you run the campaign you can make new choices for what all those npcs are so the town is different every time um so so a, a player could ostensibly play the game play multiple campaigns and not know everything. Um, yeah. Which you want. I mean, and, and honestly, you almost kind of want to have Bob, the janitor, but also have the ability to have Janet, the, the janitor and, you know, 
you know, maybe Mark the janitor, have have a few different janitor types, each with their own secrets, uh, so that you have no clue who's going to show up or what secret's going to happen. Yeah, there's yeah. going to be a, a bunch of stuff like that. There's also I'm I'm planning to have multiple options of why you can't leave the town. Like, what is it about the town that prevents you from leaving? So if you want to have a campaign that explores that and tries to fix that, yeah. like you can do that multiple different ways. Um, and I have I have dreams of a right now it's a spreadsheet, but ultimately it'll be like a form fillable PDF um, where it'll be a matrix of like these these major NPCs. Um, and the matrix will be like their, their relationship with each other. So you can say, well, like, these two people are neighbors. These two people are friends. These two people have a rivalry. These two people hate each other. Okay. Um, and so you can change, so not only can you change the secrets of each of the NPCs, but you can also change their relationships with each other. And those relationships can evolve as you go. So the GM can use this as a tool to kind of track how things change. And then you can, it'll also have a spot for you to put the character's secret. So you'll have like, you know, a handy reference guide for like all these major NPCs of like, um, you know, are they a member of the cult? Um, cause there, there's the potential of a cult. So even if they're not like, even if they're not the cult leader, they might be a member of the cult. Are they, right. what, what role do they fill? Um, as far as like a job or like who are they in the town um, and then what their secret is and then what their relationships with each other are. So you can have uh, all that sort of kind of change and be different every time you play. Nice. I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play that. That sounds awesome. And then um, but you're not you, you, but you're saying basically you don't really have all of that ready for your play test, right? You're just, <laughs> well, it'll be one of those things that I'll develop. I'll just kind of develop a bunch of it as we're play testing and then, I'll refine what I have and I'll add more to it for the actual game book. Cause in the play test, we won't get to every possible person in town in the course of the play yeah. test. You know, we'll only handle only, only we'll only deal with so many. Um, so, I mean, in, you know, like writing setting, once you really kind of know what it is, the hardest part for me is coming up with good names, <laughs> like, you know, getting a, like a nice diverse <laughs> cast of characters with great names yeah. um, that stick with you, um, you know, and just kind of building all of that out. So like, this this is this is a game that I I don't know when it would kickstart, but it could conceivably kickstart this year. It could conceivably kickstart relatively early this year. It wouldn't necessarily be like an October or November. Well, I mean, especially there. if your um if your playtest goes really well, it'll be a lot yeah. Of, it depends okay, a lot on the playtest. It was more ready than I thought it was. Let's go ahead and kick it now. You know, <laughs> it's gonna yeah, it's gonna depend a lot on, on the playtest. And I'm planning yeah. to do the layout and everything myself for that as well. So that's gonna save a lot of time. Um, that I'll yes. just be able to work on that. I'll be able to start working on that, you know, well in advance and just getting master pages and kind of figuring out how it's gonna go. My hope to do for artwork is to do um I'm I'm experimenting with the idea of really saving a bunch of money on trying to do one of these games. Um, I love hiring artists. I love having an artist that does like, you know, really fantastic. When you, when I did good, strong hands, it's like all this fantasy stuff that like you kind of need an uh, uh, art artist to do, to get the right look yeah. for it and everything. But this is a <laughs> modern day horror kind of thing. There's a ton of um, like royalty free or relatively cheap to license photography. That is people yeah. doing like horror photography and just like creepy places and people in makeup and costume stuff. And like, so I, I expect that my, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go, if it's going to be straight photography or if it's going to be photography that gets manipulated a little bit to do, make it look a little more like sketches and do, you know, do filters and things. I'm going to toy around with some cool. ideas and, and lay out, you know, kind of do the book with, with yeah. more of that kind of stuff. That could be really cool, though. That, so, I mean, I'm, I already get a good idea as to what it will look like. Yeah, and it's you know, it's because it's you you can get away with that because it's you know, small town. Like you can find photographs of small towns. If if I can't find the photographs that I want, I will just go to my hometown, and I will take <laughs> photographs. <laughs> well, exactly, and then you just and then you can have like a sweet picture, and it just like Photoshop like a gruesome murder in the background or something. I've already got an idea for that. I for for like on the cover, I've got this 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 great photo that's just looking down the street in this town. There's no people. It's all it's just a street scene with there's some cars parked, um, and there's all the buildings and everything. It's a small town. Nothing's taller than like two stories. It's like a main street in a small town. And I'm like, can I can I Photoshop in like the silhouette of a person holding a decapitated head, like way down there? And that's it. That's the whole cover. And that's it. I love it. Yes, I, I do love it. It's 
it's one of those things that like it's one of those covers that might get people to pick it up because they'll be like but it's just the street like why huh like what what is this game you know um you know because it's interesting because it's it kind of almost does the opposite uh, approach that like most people will tell you to do like most of the time they're like no you need a big giant flashy thing to get people to pick it up and it's almost like the opposite of that it's just like an empty street what is that i, I have to let me check that out because i don't why would it just be an empty street <laughs> Right. And, you know, I could potentially do more than just the one thing. You could put something in the, a window, put a ghost in a window. Yeah. You know, you could just like a couple of little things like that, too. And I found myself like what I what I envision, what I what I would like to see is this this street scene with whatever gets photoshopped into it. And I have the idea that the town is actually called Norville. Um, and because it's in the middle of nowhere and it's this town where all these terrible things happen, people, ref the townsfolk refer to it as Nowhereville. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to have like a street sign or like a, a town sign, you know, the town sign, you know, now entering Norville population, whatever with right. nowhereville spray painted across Norville. So you can still make out Norville. Right. But it's otherwise that green sign, you know, that you see when you, when you enter a town. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be a, a kind of a different kind of cover. It'll be like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm excited to see it. When, whenever I'm toying, I'm toying around with ideas. I might, I might come up with something even better than that. But that's, yeah, it's just an idea that I have. No, that sounds awesome. So. Uh, and you, and you're gonna start running that in a couple of weeks on yep. Saturdays, which is good. Uh, and I actually am going to be since we we just talked about part time gods, but I'm probably gonna start running that in a couple of weeks as well. Here, mine are Wednesday evenings. Uh, I'm still just trying to narrow down a couple of other players. So we'll see who ends up coming and playing. I guess we'll see. Um, <laughs> but the game that we just finished before the new year was um, for Ampere 5. And excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that is actually what we're going to be kickstarting. We're probably going to be kickstarting that in February or March, one of the two, uh, for Ampere 5, which is the final uh, book of the series and yeah. very excited about that. So that is, that is another, you know, big one that we have coming. The culmination. Uh, yes. Well, and we're going to have it set. We're going to have it as two different ways. You can buy it. You can either buy it at, you know, the separate editions and whatnot, or we're going to have where you can buy the giant, like omnibus, uh, you know, giant thing. We're still trying to figure it out. Cause some people are like, well, just give me all the story in one book. And in all of the, all of the mechanics in another book. And I'm just like, eh, like that seems like too much work to like <laughs> separate it all out. Um, I would just rather just give you the whole thing as just one thing. And I mean, I'll 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 lay it out like all the powers by itself, and I can lay out all the story and stuff by itself. But there's there's a lot of like stuff that happens in I don't know. The layout's gonna be crazy for that, but I, I'm I'm happy to let Todd do that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but Ampere Five, it, it's lo it's looking really strong. I actually have a, I have the outline and uh, like maybe a quarter of it already written. So January is I'm going to be do the majority of the writing for it, and then um, and then uh, in and then in February, you know, the majority of the writing will be done. But the fun thing about the book is, you know, normally what we do is I give a timeline and then we give like a deep dive into the timeline in a separate chapter. Like, hey, this thing happened, and then in another chapter we say, and this was the secret behind that thing that happened. Um, but, uh, I think what, what we're going to be doing this year for year five is I'm inviting some of my, uh, my freelancers that have come and written for AMP. Uh, so the first part is going to be my timeline, my completion of the story. And then my, uh, freelancers are going to come in, uh, and they're intimate with the world they've written for it before. Some of the stuff they made, like they put into the storyline, uh, but they get to kind of give us what they're after the story ends what do they think is going to happen uh and what kind of cool things is going to come after uh just to kind of set up anybody who you know might be get, just getting into the game now and what if you want to play after the timeline officially ends you know just different ideas of where you can take it so i think that that's going to be really really fun uh and we have <clears throat> excuse me and we have some affiliation guides that we're going to have as part of it uh, that we're hoping to also get funded. So we'll we'll see what happens because we have eight of the affiliation guides done. 
Um, we have another six that need to get done. So hopefully we fund for the whole thing and then we can get everything done. And if we do that, then it just makes the omnibus book just <laughs> even bigger, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, that's what you want. That's what people want. They want a giant. They Everybody want a giant loves a big fat book. Yeah. Yeah. If we did that, though, I would probably have to make it no longer because the book right now is seven by ten. So I might have to bump up like I might bump it up to maybe, you know, the regular eight and a half by 11 just so I can fit more on a page. Sure. So we'll have to see. It just seems like that might be the way to go for a giant book. Um, but yeah, so there's that. I've had and people then, uh, I've had people ask me if I was ever going to take the three capers supplements and put them all in an omnibus. Like yeah? Put them in a, in a big hardcover. I've had people ask that question. Yeah. They like people. There, there are people out there that like that big fat book. <laughs> I just, I, I'm weird that way. I actually prefer to have separate books. Like, I like because when somebody just owns the one book, like, I'm, I doubt that more, like, more than one person in a group is going to be like, we all bought the giant book. It's like, no, it's. But so, I think, I think it's cool to be able to be like, oh yeah, that power is in year two. Here's that book. You have that book while I'm looking at year three, and Mark over there can be looking at year five, and like, you know, we can all kind of just be looking right. at stuff at the same time. If you just buy the giant book, it's like you have to read over each other's store over your other's shoulders or um, take turns. And who wants to take turns? I'm I'm impatient. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Yeah, but some people know, love them. They, they 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 love them. They do. I mean, <laughs> um, but just so two other games that are coming out that have people have heard about. I've talked about them before. Um, well, two other books: uh, Poison Fruit. That's for going to be for Ninja Crusade. That was supposed to be last year. Um, and then right as we started writing it, me and the other co-writer, cause it was going to be me and the other co-writer, um, like not only was I hit by COVID a lot, not that I got sick, but it definitely disrupted my life. Uh, but the other co-writer, um, life just went to shambles because of it. So that's what happens with, uh, crazy things. So 2021, we're going to start the process over again for that book. Uh, so that book should be out. Kids Guide, actually, all the writing is done. Uh, that's Kids Guide to, to Monster Hunting. Is the guide I'm uh, is the book I'm talking about? Kids Guide to Monster Hunting. Uh, that's for the PIP system, and that book should actually be done. It's I think all the writing is done, um, but it's ready to start going through the editing and the proofing and stuff. So uh, at least there we're we're at a pretty good stage for that book. So busy, busy, busy. One. No, I and then I still have one more to talk about, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it over to you uh, again because I don't want to bogart the whole conversation. <laughs> hey, I just got my I just got my fourth play tester for for Nowhereville. I just got Woo! confirmation that oh, they can cool. join. So cool. Um, <laughs> which of course now means I have to get the play test materials together. <laughs> so I've got no! something else to do tomorrow. Um, uh, uh, Work you well. As far as like what else is on the on my plate, like. I have been toying with the idea of Capers Cyber for over a year. Um, and I've mm. done some work on it. I've, I've done a bunch of writing. I've done a lot of rule stuff. I, create, I uh, uh, created a whole bunch of new powers. Um, I, I developed some other stuff that kind of expands, um, allows you to play a character to kind of quote a higher level, quote unquote. Like, you know, you can, ex yeah. you know, your character, you can play the place. Basically, you could play the play a campaign longer. Because um, right. your character will can have more and more space to advance and more stuff to be able to, cool stuff to do, um, and gain. Um, and it's and it's actually, I mean, it's a it's a common it's a it's a continuation of the of the Capers timeline, which starts in the 1920s, and then there's a book in the 40s and a book in the 60s, and it jumps to today to the 2020s, but it's an alternate 2020s where everything is much more advanced technologically because when you have super powered people, you have super smart people. And when you have super smart people, advancements in technology happen faster. So the idea being that in this world, um, the internet that we know now happened in the 80s. Right. Like, that makes sense. Like, um, and so like now, and when you get to the 2020s, you're into the, you know, like now you're into cyber cyber technology and, you know, the, the singularity is right around the corner. A, um, AI is like 
just about ready to destroy us all. Like it's just a matter of time before somebody <laughs> creates a true, really good AI and it just immediately replicates itself. Are there flying itself. cars? Then, that's all I care about. <laughs> um, I, I don't have specific plans for flying. I think there could probably be hover vehicles. Um, flying <laughs> gets, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, but the idea being that it would be like an actual supers slash cyberpunk setting in yeah. like an alternate today um, with like the full on mega corporations. The game will be set. It'll be like, it'll be punk punk. It'll be like actual cyber yeah, yeah. punk cyberpunk as opposed to flashy. Look at how cool everything looks cyberpunk. Um, because I want mega corps. Well, I want mega corps that have come to control the populace, um, that have beat a lot of people down and they've also weaponized supers. Um, and so like, like if you, when you're playing the game, then you, you're playing, you know, capers or, you know, you can play non superpowered characters too. Um, cause you can get all cybered up and whatnot. But the idea being that you'd be looking to actually, um, you know, crush, <laughs> dismantle the cyber or the, uh, the mega corps. Um, and, um, like if, if people have paid attention to the capers timeline and seen the little hints of what's going on in the background about how like, um, capers, the super superpower people are called capers in the game. Capers are being like, by the time you get to the sixties, you have to be registered. Like it's full right. on X-Men style. Like if you're, you have, you're supposed to be registered with the government. If you'd not, you're a rogue agent um, and you can be handled more harshly. And then that only gets worse when you go from the 1960s right. to the 2020s. Um, and so uh, like if you're playing a, a superpowered character in this cyber game, um, you're not playing a registered, <laughs> like you're, you're just not like if you're playing a registered, <laughs> if you're playing a registered, uh, registered super, then you're working for the government and the mega corps. And like, that's not what the game is about. So right, right. like, you're literally going to be playing for fighting. And I've got like, you know, stuff that I'm delving into as far as, um, like you could literally play a campaign. That's all about cyber activism. Like you're like, you're, it's less about like fighting, shooting up stuff and like going, you know, breaking into mega corps and stealing stuff and shooting things and whatnot. Like you yeah. could play, you could play almost as activists who are looking to find ways to dismantle, um, the mega corps in other ways than through strictly through violence. Nice. Um, so, um, uh, and I hit on, I hit on a, an idea that I hasn't come to full fruition yet, but I want there to be some sort of self actualization um, mechanic to the game, which is to say that with cyber technology and melding of man and machine and um, AI and the, the singularity being near and people being also having, you know, potentially having superpowers and all the things, all the different ways that you can change yourself in the game yeah. that like, the, the game is going to promote that. Like whereas, whereas some cyber punk games have had the humanity score where like the more cyber aware you have, the less human you are, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't yeah. fly so well anymore. Um, I literally <laughs> want, I literally want a mechanic. That's the opposite of that. Like it rewards you for making yourself into who you are supposed to be and who you truly are. That makes sense. Um, so if uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how all of that manifests yet. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how that I can, how I can do that mechanically. I think it involves a lot. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. Almost, you almost plan your character to, to some extent, like you have an idea of where you're going to go with your character and you can make changes as you go. You can adjust plan for that, but then there's certain things that can happen along the way. Some of which are like literally things that you gain like powers or cyberware or whatever, but then also like character choices of like, you're going to choose to take on a particular, um, purpose, you know, a, a purpose in life. You're going to dedicate yourself to this thing that's important to yeah. you. Um, and that's part of who you are as well. And so you get rewarded for that mechanically when you make I like mean, story, really story I'm, choices. I'm in seeing how you do that. <clears throat> Definitely. I just got to figure out how it all works mechanically. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I think I know like, how it can work. It, it just, it's, it's, it's a plus two to self actualization. So, well, you have you in go. the I, game, my initial thought, my initial thought is in the game you have the the moxie um, pool. Your character has moxie. It's a it's a resource that you can spend. Okay. Um, and normally in capers, you you can have no maximum of five moxie. My thought is that your moxie maximum will go up as you hit these steps. It increases your possible mm. maximum moxie, <clears throat> and then you can also spend 
one of those points of permanent, like one of those limits to automatically succeed on a check with a boon, like to have the best success that you can. Yeah. So you can be constantly striving to gain more stuff that's going to push your moxie maximum up. But then as it goes up, like if you have too much moxie, you really it's like you don't need that much because you're going to spend it. But, you know, like you're just you're just going to be sitting on a lot of extra that's not going to be doing anything. So the idea being right. that you can spend those permanent points away to get these like immediate important like I will suc- I, I do this thing and I succeed on it and I do it really well and I spend this permanent thing to do it but i can earn it back again later <laughs> <laughs> i dig that i dig that i i like the spending of uh permanent things i think that it i think it gives some oomph to like doing something that's really awesome and not, so, not too many games do that that's gonna take so, some yeah it's gonna take a bunch of play testing <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna take yeah. camp. It's gonna take campaign playtesting is the more important yeah. important point. I, I need to. I need four or five players to all progress through those processes of gaining all right. these extra, get, gaining this moxie limit that goes up and up and up, and see what happens when some of them spend it constantly, and maybe one of the people kind of sits on it, doesn't spend it as much because ever you know you get players with different dynamics. Some people play conservatively. Some people you know like like they'll, they'll spend like crazy. They'll be like, oh, I've got, I've got I've got three. Moxie, my my max Moxie is three. I can get by with two, <laughs> so I'll spend this permanent <laughs> limit point um, to get this great effect now. Um, yeah, even I, they, do that. I might, do that. It might hamstring game. them a little. Um, a lot of the time, what I end up doing is I will like uh, like an amp, for instance. There's uh, like when you, it's all based on your adrenaline. So if like you're in danger or you're in a fight or something happens around you, you'll get a bump in your juice that you can spend to use your powers um but basically what i have is i have a resting like what is your it's called juice is what it's called so like what is your juice at when you're just hanging out right so it's like oh it's like your juice is most most amps have a juice of three when they're just hanging out and then if bad stuff starts happening it can go up to 10 and then you're spending it and you're gaining more and spending and gaining more spending and getting more and then but i have i had a bunch of people who when I first introduced that, there was a lot of like, oh, well, I just like, you know, I walk around with adrenaline needles and I just like, you know, poke myself with them and just make sure that I'm always at the max. And I'm just like, but no, like eventually that stuff is going to wear off, you know, so ba- so basically it becomes like an ebb and flow sort of thing. Sure. And it's a and it's a good way to do it. Like even in part time gods, like uh, I have the the Pantheon pool in the middle and like when things happen throughout the game, you get a whole bunch of extra dice and all this, blah, blah, blah. And I have some groups who are just like, no, we don't want to use it because what if something happens? And I'm like, we have like five more minutes to play and you have not spent <laughs> any. So I remind um, people of stuff like, like that with one shots all the time. I'm like, yeah, you got like there's like this is this is a one shot. You got a half an hour left. Here's the big final combat. Like you've got five moxie. Like start spending it. It's start spending you, it. You, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to reward you for hanging on to it. <laughs> you don't get, well, you don't get something why, like, special at the God, end well, and, and in part time gods what I ended up doing was just saying that it refreshes at the beginning of every session so if you don't spend it you lost it so done yep. Like, so you better spend it that's not even in a con game that's just any game like if you're just <laughs> accumulating and accumulating and never doing anything with it well then that's not how you play that game so <laughs> I wouldn't suggest doing that. I would suggest doing it the way that it's written and you should use it. So that's just me. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, but that sounds cool. I would, I'd play that. <laughs> no, I I'd just play I a, have to cyberpunk 2020 capers. That sounds great. I got a, I got, there's a lot, there's a lot of work to be done there. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And that's that one, and that one, like that one will be more expensive to produce and everything and that'll need a full, you know, full artwork and the whole deal and everything. I won't be able to, I won't be able to cheat my way into, you know, if I need 2020 um, era semi futuristic, but also with like some art deco, because I want there to be like a nostalgia for the 20, for the 1920s. That's part of right. the, part of the aesthetic. So I literally, I mean, I literally want like, you know, Tommy guns, like, uh, 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 like, pulse rifle tommy gun looking thing with a fedora um that's <laughs> made of like silver with a chrome band you know or like you know whatever what you could um, do is you could take your existing <laughs> art 
and then just hand it to a different artist and then can just apply layers to it. <laughs> Chrome It'll it up. Be a guy and he, you just grab him, like make like a cyber eye and like all this stuff. And I don't suggest doing that. I'm just saying that that would be the well, way to do it. <laughs> it could be. An, it, no, I mean, if I, if I used Beth Varney, who did all the capers artwork, if I did that again, I could take a few pieces from other books and say, okay, let's take those pieces and let's cyber them. And like, just let, the, let, let that yeah. be a, an Easter egg for people who have all the books, you know, like, Oh, this is a piece. Yeah, from the like, hey, I know this piece. Yeah. Oh, and here's the, here's the great kicker to it too, is of course there's cyberspace in the game, right? There's going to be a virtual world. Well, the virtual world is the capers game. Oh, <laughs> I love it. So you go and that, you, that's good. You go to 1920s Chicago or New York or whatever, and you've got a whole cast of characters that are computer generated and they are the characters from the capers game. So like I've already got a, su <laughs> there's a, the supplements done before the main game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That sounds great. Again, I I I play that. I don't know. It sounds great. <laughs> if I um, get my act together and get the stupid thing written, <laughs> well, and play, and play we all have to get our acts together. All and I expect stuff that, that I expect you. that would be a bigger book too. That'll be a big yeah. Oh yeah. Be like a eight and a half by eleven. It'll be like two hundred pages or more. Well, it would There'll essentially have be a to lot explain to it. everything that's in the regular book, and then with more. Unless yeah. you just made it possibly a supplement to the actual capers, and then that would save you some page count. You wouldn't have to reprint a bunch of rules and stuff because if you already own capers, then now you just buy the let's bump everything up to 2020, and then well, you yeah. can introduce the, a new rule. You could do that. I got away with doing the, the supplement thing and just having like, okay, now here's here's like an equipment, two pages of equipment that are in 1940s dollars. And here's one in 1960s right. dollars. But the problem is when you go from, when you jump a hundred years, everything changes so dramatically. Um, just True. every, you know, True. like every, everything about, uh, about the, the world that you're in, like it, it needs a whole new setting unto itself. It needs a, like a whole New York megalopolis kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's gotta be all new. Um, it's, it's got this stuff that expands and allows you to play for longer and have higher level characters essentially. Which right. it's it's probably better to just yeah mm -hmm. like this this feels like it wants to just be a whole game book from the from the ground up again it'll be everything that sounds, that sounds self contained right. yeah I was just throwing it, that out just, there I'm just no thinking. no I, I I've thought about it <laughs> it's it's work it works okay when you jump twenty or forty years but like when you jump a hundred years boy it's so yeah. different I I agree um, and then the last thing that I'm working on for this year and there might be other things but this is the last official thing that I'm working on. Um, is I'm working on my Sinister Beasts game, which is my dark Pokemon RPG, <laughs> which should be out. Uh, that'll probably be this, like, you know, very tail end of, of, of this year, probably. Uh, but like a lot of the principal writing is done, but I'm bringing in a new developer to kind of help flesh it out and maybe make it less just a Loy's brain centric. Uh, so, but it is actually, it's, it's, it's pretty good the way it is and very different approach to, uh, combat. It's using the chakra system. So the same system that Ninja Crusade and part-time gods used. Uh, but, um, again, for combat, I'm switching everything up, uh, because that's what I do, uh, in, in, in any of my games. Uh, I like every game to kind of feel like it's supposed to. So if you're having monster battles, I can't use ninja mechanics for that. Uh, so sure. it just doesn't work out, <laughs> but, yeah, but, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about that game. And, uh, like I said, we're going to go into major, uh, development of it this year. Uh, and that's one I've been promising for a few years actually. Uh, but I keep hitting, uh, roadblocks where I was like, but I don't, I don't know how this is supposed to work. And I, I work on it for like a few months and then I put it away cause I had other shit I needed to do. But, you know, eventually uh, we've gotten now to a point where it's it's pretty darn good. So now we just have to get it written, and fleshed out and all that stuff. But I'm, it's very I'm very excited. It's kind of a mix between Pokemon and um, Battle Angel. And uh, there's there's some other stuff in there. Some Ghost in the Machine. Uh, it's, it's, there's there's a ton of stuff in there. Some Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm pretty excited about that game. Because I kind of get to define a brand new kind of uh, way to interpret a, a new world. It's post-apocalyptic, which is fun. Uh, you know, post-apocalyptic Pokemon. Come on. That sounds great. <laughs> but uh, but yes, very excited about that game. And uh, that's the last thing that I'm working on. 
Uh, and then, like I said, anything else will be gravy. But that's that's a lot. I think people are asking too much of me. Uh, <laughs> if, they expect, if they expect more than what I just listed out, all those, those are one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be seven books this year. Um, if you guys are expecting more than seven books, then uh, you smoking something. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that many. <laughs> well, I, when I say that I'm doing it, like I also have a team. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's not it's not like me doing it everything single handedly. Oh, that would not happen. <laughs> <laughs> so although a lot of these I am doing, but, you know, like Kids Guide is already done. Sinister, I'm going to be handing off to somebody. Old Run is pretty much already done. It's just getting in the layout and stuff. So like that seventh one is kind of like it's done. You guys are just waiting for it. Um, but the other ones, yeah, the, the other ones are kind of me. The other ones are kind of me. So, uh, and I, and I'll, <laughs> and I, you know, I have to fit it in with all of the other crap that I do because, uh, that's my life. But you know what I did know, what I did hear is that they're probably going to be opening up my youngest son's school again, which Ooh. that right there is amazing for me because it will allow me to actually start getting work done again. <laughs> uh, I have not been able to do anything for months because my son is four and he, uh, you know, he's like a, a, a fungus that just like <laughs> is attached to you and you can't scrub it off. Like it's just stays there constantly. So I can't do things. I have to like, I have to, I'm only able to really do things on the weekends. So that's why like almost nothing do got done in 2020 because my son has been around saying, daddy uh can we go and have some cereal and i'd be like well i would really like to write maybe for a little bit no i think we should have cereal instead and it's like <laughs> fine i guess you know um, it's it's crazy Tina. because you can do like you can do little things but like to get into like um like whenever i'm doing music or i'm doing writing or i'm doing any of these things like you have to get into a mode you have to get into that creative like you know, you have to get into the, you have to get a groove going. And that, and that means that you need to block out like a good three, four hours of time for you to like knock some stuff out and really get stuff going. Like you can't sit, like writing is such a weird thing. Like you can't just sit and write like, oh, I got like 200 words done. I'll come back to it later. It's like, no, it's like, as soon as you got those 200 words, you have to write the next 200 and you have to write the next 200 and then the next thousand and you have to, but it has all has to happen there. Otherwise you mess with your flow. And that's why it's like, oh, it's so it's very annoying. I'm very excited. My son's going to be going back to school <laughs> so, is what I'm saying. I love my son, but I need less time with him so that I can get other things done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like you've got a busy year ahead of you. I do. I do. I mean, like I said, on top of on top of these seven books, people, seven, seven books uh, on top of seven books. Uh, I'm, I started a band. We're going to be releasing some of our music this year. So very excited about that. Uh, I actually just posted about that on Facebook all the day because I created the Facebook page for it. I don't know why I hadn't done that yet, but I <laughs> just decided that the first of the year was the year to, was the time to do that. Uh, and I've actually been working on like a final mix of our first song. So that's what I've been doing for a lot of today. Um, but yeah, so doing that and then obviously I have all my YouTube channels that I have to start making content again for, I haven't done anything in like weeks because, uh, holidays, you know, holidays. Oh man. I can't wait for my, you, you put these, you put these little chats of ours up on your YouTube. Do you not? These do go up on my YouTube channel. These go up on my, Excellent. uh, my Alloy the Saint YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, people seem to enjoy them there. I didn't get like a ton of views, but hey, I don't get a ton of views on there in general. So No, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's I'm, I'm 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 asking mostly for me because uh I just want to make sure I link up to this, to this one in particular. Um yeah. for for uh my folks, my fans um, who are wondering what's going on. go back and be like, um, okay, what did I promise people? Oh crap, I actually mm, have to make that happen now. That's that's mostly what I that's why I'm making a list over here. I'm like, all right, what are the things I just said I'm going to try and get done this year? Okay, now I actually have to do those things. So oh, <laughs> nuts. I could have not mentioned half of them and then it would have just been, you know, oh, Aloy didn't say anything about that. But no, I like to tell everything to everybody uh, and it keeps me on my toes uh, and people will be like, hey, where's that thing that you said? I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, let's do that now. 
<laughs> and uh, I'm a sucker. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Now you're on the hook. Now I'm on the hook. I'm always on the but, hook. But yeah, people are more forgiving, especially with uh what well, everything we just came out of. And uh and you know, it's gonna be it's gonna take all year for um all it's gonna take 2021, most most if not all of the year for the RPG industry to kind of get back to where it had been. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as far as like when we, when we're going to maybe see some conventions happen, people are going to, you know, production schedules are going to start to ramp back up a little bit better. Um, You know, people are going to start shifting back into modes of how they were doing things earlier um, before, before last year. Yeah. It's going to take some time and people are, people are being forgiving about that. And anybody who's not being a forgiving, not being forgiving about that. (sighs) screw them you it's know? a like, jerk you're, <laughs> you're being a Stop jag being a jerk. Knock, knock it off <laughs> knock it off man don't be a poop head yes don't be a, a duty head <laughs> all right so i think that that officially means that we're done uh so i think we're gonna yeah, go we've, ahead we've, re- we're, we've, we've devolved to uh calling people poop heads and duty heads so yeah i think <laughs> bedtime for craig yeah i think i think we're do, i think we're good i'm it's definitely bedtime for Aloy. so uh so hey everybody who came and actually um uh there were a few of you who came in said you know happy new year happy new year to everybody yep. uh great things coming from both third eye games and uh nerd burger games as well as nerd eye this channel uh we have lots of fun stuff and i have my part-time gods game that's going to be the first quarter uh craig's uh nowhereville uh play test is going to be the first quarter so you have those i'm also going to be interspersing some one shots here and there uh on wednesday nights so that um just so that it, it's hard to ask somebody to do like just make sure that you are 10 consecutive weeks to come and record this thing so i'm like how about three weeks on and one off we'll see what happens uh, I still only have two players at the moment, so <laughs> it's still not, it's still not an enticing uh, thing for too many people, I guess. <laughs> well, anyway, it, um, and it's it's a week it's a weeknight, so it's a little rough. Yeah, weeknights can be tough. To yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. That too. Oh man, so, uh, you'll find somebody. I'm, I'm terrible. All right, everybody. So we will see you later, and thanks for coming and listening to me and Craig blabber. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>